all of you here, and I know the children are and all the adults in our program. This is our First Methodist Church's new musical theater film program for all ages. And all you have to do is just choose to participate. And that's what all these people have done. And what we've been doing for the, the first three programs this is the third of a series. We've been looking at music in the church, different kinds of music in the church. The first program was for the 4th of July, and so it was patriotic music that we sing as Christians, God of our fathers, for example, and music like that. And then we have a lot of fun with stories that most people don't know about those, those, that music. For example, we did Yankee Doodle with Wyatt over here that was so much fun. And then for Christmas, we did a program on Christmas carols. We discovered there, there are three basic categories of Christmas carols. And they're about lullabies primarily, about shepherds, and they're also about movement and dance with, with uh, carols. So we did a wonderful program that, was with, that involved interpretive movement in a very respectful way with the children primarily, and it was just so wonderful. And now we've decided to look at the history and the value of hymns. And what we're discovering is there's many types of music, and we have plans for the future that I can't wait to share with you, but I'm going to wait and let you just be surprised. But we don't want to feature just one single kind of music, but we want to, s we want to use music that honors God, that has good theology, that has good doctrine, and it's about God. It's not about us, but it's about God and worship it, worshiping him. And the hymns, we've discovered as we've been studying together that these hymns have existed for hundreds of years, haven't they? And what's so amazing is the first song we'll be singing tonight is A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Think how old that is from the beginning of the Reformation. And yet those words are still so important, so true, and so valuable for us today. So we don't want to disregard those things. They, are, they have tremendous value in terms of our Christian knowledge and Christian growth. So we've been studying the value and the history of, of hymns, which I think you're going to see a little bit of in the dramas that we do, the movement, and the music. And then at the end, Sammy Marshall and Carl Bradley are going to provide a, a magnificent medley with some of the newest of our equipment, I think, including our trumpets with the organ of John Wesley and Charles Wesley hymns. So this is really a treat. There are very few churches that celebrate this kind of music like we are, and we're hoping that we can be role models throughout the world, frankly, because that's where this is going today by streaming. Also, I want to thank those who have been participating. Uh, the, the directors are incredible. And today, Beverly is going above and beyond. Beverly Kermode, you'll see the program, and hopefully you have it. But Trent Holden, uh, who is Jackie's husband, was a vital part of this program, had to be called out of town because his father had an accident was uh, ultimately moved to, is being moved to a, a memory care program on Monday. So Beverly is filling in for Trent. So you can be surprised as to how she does that because <laughs> she figured that out. They figured that out this morning after choir, after church this morning. How are we going to do this? And so I'm just so grateful to Jackie and to Beverly and to Jana, who is our wonderful choreographer. They are all wonderful with children. We love children. And all of us have long backgrounds in education. And so we want to help these children, as the Army says, be all they can be. 
and to use every skill and ability uh, that God has given them and to help cultivate their faith and a keen mind. So we're seeing tremendous growth with these children, and we're very, very proud of them. And I'm proud of every one of us. Some of our members in our group are in their 80s. A, a bunch of us are, as a matter of fact. A number of us are 70s and 80s. So it's never too late. You can all, <laughs> right? <laughs> if Cindy Goodfellow can work with children, <laughs> we all can. She's a fabulous role model. All right, so here we go with our program on Christian growth through hymns. What's wrong, Jackie? Beverly, our world is its just in such a mess. Wars, famines, shootings. It's, it's just all so depressing. Oh, I'm so sorry. It really can be sometimes. But you know what makes me feel better? Coming here to this beautiful church each week to hear God's word and to share fellowship with our church family. It really helps me to get recentered and refocused. I find the traditional hymns we sing to be particularly uplifting. I completely agree with that. Those hymns are as relevant today as they were when they were written many, many years ago. They connect us with fellow Christians through the ages. You know, they were written by Christian men and women who were going through great difficulties, just as we are today. The hymn writers grew in their relationship with God because they had faith that he would deliver them. That's true. Hey, have you ever just read the lyrics of the hymns we are singing? They all have a story to tell, and every verse makes a difference. We are singing one of my favorite hymns today. Listen to these encouraging words written hundreds of years ago from Martin Luther in his hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. A mighty fortress is our God a bulwark never failing, our helper he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. Did we in our own strength confide? Our striving would be losing. We're not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Dusk ask who that may be. Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord Sabaoth his name, from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. Yes, traditional hymns focus on such good doctrine and theology. They help us to remember that God is our eternal help and strength. They convey God's love, forgiveness, and grace. Thank you for sharing that with me, Beverly. You know, focusing on God's his great love and his faithfulness fills me with tremendous hope. I'm glad you feel better. Thank you. 
Martin Luther was indeed the father of the Reformation. He was a great hymn writer. He was a forerunner and a role model for other great hymn writers and for all Christians as he stood against the corruption in the church of his day. As his life was threatened, he trusted in God for his protection. And his hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, has been an inspiration from his time until now. So we'd love for you to join with us in singing this great hymn. So please turn to your hymnal, and you'll find that hymn in, in number 35. All right, all right. What type of song did we just listen to and sing to? <gasps> yes. A 
hymn. Yes, yes, a hymn. And what do we know about hymns? How are they written? God gives the people who write the hymns encouragement to write the hymns. Yes, yes, he does. And how does God want us to sing these hymns? Joyfully. Yes, yes, he does. He wants us to sing them joyfully. What brings you joy? Can you think of something that brings you joy? Climbing trees and playing with my teacher. Aww. Playing my singing monsters. Oh. Jumping! Jumping. What brings you joy? Drawing. Lots and lots of candy. Playing with my friends. Playing with puppies. Being funny and silly. <laughs> so many things bring us joy. So many, so many things. And God wants us to sing his hymns joyfully. The hymns that he gives us um, the knowledge to write and to perform. So what song are we going to sing now? Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Yes, yes. Okay, so everybody remember. All right, places. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Oh, 
same that way, but our schedules just haven't meshed so that we could get together. I'm so glad you were able to meet me today. It is such a beautiful day. At least once the rain stopped, it was beautiful. <laughs> I love that song you were singing. Who wrote that? Frances Jane Crosby. She was born in 1820, and she wrote 8,000, the lyrics to 8,000 hymns. 8,000? In, in spite of being blind. Wow. I can't imagine that. That blows my mind. Mm. Uh, now, she was blind, right? Right. Was she blind all of her life, or did she? was it after she got older? Well, when she was about <laughs> six weeks old, she developed an awful cold, and her eyes were very inflamed. So her physician prescribed a mustard poultice to be applied to her eyes, and this caused her to be blind. Mm -hmm. Her parents took her to an ophthalmologist in New York, but he uh, said there was nothing he could do to help her. And um, she was educated at the New York Institute for the Blind. She spent 12 years there, and then she became a teacher there for 11 years. And while there, she learned to play the harp, the organ, and the piano. Good grief, I can't play any of them. <laughs> and she married one of the blind students. Um, they had um, one child who was who was blind during infancy. But their relationship was literally the blind leading the blind. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you know all of this? Well, my great, great grandmother. Oh, wow. I guess it is in the genes then. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. Well, I am so glad to, to know about that. I didn't know all of that. She wrote uh, Rescue the Perishing, Care for the uh, Dying. She wrote Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross, and Tell Me the Stories of Jesus, and Jesus is Tenderly Calling. Just many beautiful hymns. Oh, yeah. Many of those are my favorites. That is wonderful. Well, Unfortunately, I've got to run, but let's get together again as soon as possible. All right, let's stay in touch. Please do. Bye bye. Because of the 8,000 hymns and gospel songs she wrote, Fanny Crosby was known as the queen of gospel songwriters and as the mother of modern congregational singing in America. Most American hymnals have included her work. She was also a mission worker, poet, lyricist, and composer who was known for her teaching. She believed her lifetime of blindness brought her closer to the heart of God. She said, One of the easiest resolves that I formed in my young life was to leave all care to yesterday and to believe that the morning would bring forth its own peculiar joy. Please stand and sing with us her well-known hymn, To God Be the Glory. It is in our hymnal on page 531.
Brothers John and Charles Wesley wrote over 6,500 hymns, Charles being the more fruitful hymn writer. Upon his conversion, Charles Wesley immediately began writing hymns, each one packed with doctrine, all of them exhibiting strength and sensitivity. He wrote constantly, and even on horseback, his mind was flooded with new songs. He often stopped at houses along the road and ran in asking for pen and ink. Together, the brothers started the Methodist movement in the Church of England. John and Charles soon found themselves out of favor with many fellow Anglican ministers, and many pulpits were closed to them. They did not let this deter them from sharing the gospel. They began to preach outside in farmers' fields and were able to share the good news with thousands. You are undoubtedly familiar with many Wesley hymns, such as, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Hark, the herald angels sing. And Christ the Lord is risen today just to name a few. Please enjoy a medley of Wesley hymns as Dr. Carl Bradley and Mr. Sammy Marshall share with us their musical talents.
forgot to pray. So, uh, could you hand me that mic right there? Uh, somebody, we just simply need to thank thank the Lord for these for all the musicians. That was incredible, you guys. That was absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much, and thank you all for for being here. What a So, Father, we just praise you and thank you for this wonderful, wonderful afternoon. My heart is absolutely overwhelmed with gratitude and joy. And I just thank you for, especially for Carl and Sammy, with all they have going on to put such energy and such strength into these marvelous pieces. Thank you for reminding us how Blessed we are to have these hymns, the faith of our fathers living still. Lord, help us never to be ungrateful for those who have gone before and who have given us gifts to help us worship you. So, Lord, we all want to continue to glorify you and to use all of the gifts and talents that you have given us. And we ask, Lord, you'd help us to be role models and examples to others around the world who want to do the same. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <laughs> 